and no laughing either. <laughs> I... <laughs> hey guys, it's Gus, and today we are doing a never winter video on Castle Ravenloft. And the reason why we're doing this is um, in the forums, um, Reddit, and Facebook, and Discord, it's commonly mentioned that this room is um, abandoned many of the times when people get it is a is a wreck and I think that's because a lot of people don't know this dungeon it's actually fairly easy so I'm gonna do a talk through today so if you don't know the mechanics you'll have a better understanding so we just meet these beat these mobs um, nothing hard about this this is gonna be the first boss and this is the sisters <clears throat> And this boss can be very troublesome. Um, there's there's uh, multiple mechanics in here, and I'll talk you through it. There's three phases. Uh, one person has to be dedicated for the book. It's the easiest job in here. Uh, it, it, it shouldn't be the tank. It could be anybody else. Preferably your lowest DPS. Uh, I'm going to take it just so I can show you what, to, what we're doing. And it's been a while since I took the book, but I believe you just walk over it and pick it up. And then the only thing you don't want to do is press the R1 button and drop it. Because if you drop it, it takes forever before you can pick it back up. You'll lose the aggro. So when we come in here, the tank's going to go left, the DPS are going to go left, the healer's going to go left. Because they're going to uh, start attacking over there. But my goal is to find the book, and it's going to be right around here. Whenever it drops, I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to keep this two other sister phantoms over here away from the group. And let's see, we can't see the health bar. There it is. It will pop in just a minute. There we go. Now there's the book right there in that blue. Just walk up to it. Bam, I got the book. You just pick it up by walking over it. So now I got it, and I'm going to press the R2 button. And you see that blue that blue beam right there? It it just get, uh, makes it so you get aggro, and you can pull the sisters towards you. And that way, they're not fighting. Um, that way, on the other side of the arena, they can fight and take the sister down. So I got the two sisters right here. You see that? It's too easy. This is almost unfair when you take the book because you just walk. Just like, just walk and avoid the red, but stay on, stay on this side. I could uh, give you an instructional and show you what happens if I go over there. But what would, be hap what would happen is, is they would all become invincible and it would just be a, a shit show and we'd have to wipe. So just stay over here. I wish we could see the health bar, but we can't. Uh, there's one major thing you need to know. Okay, now you they killed the first sister. You have to kill this eye quickly. If you don't, it, if uh, you don't kill fast enough, it's a wipe. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get the book again. And I'm going to... You, you just pick it up by walking over it. And then you're going to hold the R2 button. And suck them into you. Just like that. Now, when you're on, if you're on the other side, in the main group fighting, it's a normal fight except... If she puts chains on somebody, nobody can attack. Because if you attack her, it won't hurt her. And all the damage that you would do to her, you're doing to the person who has chains on. So, that's you just got to be careful. You just can't button mash like crazy. You have to be somewhat careful. But it's not too bad. Oh, what's this? I have no idea what just happened there. But I'll recover. Pick up the book. Press R1. And draw the aggro. Mm, I have never had that happen. This is usually really easy being over here. Uh, but we'll watch that. We'll go just to see where the health bar is. Damn. We're not close enough. Um, this is so boring being the book holder. Back in the day when we run a buffer and a healer and two DPS the um, the low DPS or the buffer would take the book now it's 
you gotta trust the person with the book though because they can ruin this whole it's it's basically a wipe if they let go but I've just been holding the R, uh, R2 don't press R1 if you just hold the R2 down it just that blue beam is just constant and they should have it killed fairly soon when they do the red eye will pop up and we just kill it quickly and the third sister comes and when the third sister comes you don't have to worry about the book anymore everybody just beats the beats the um, the vampire out of her okay there we go so now we gotta kill the eye again if you don't it is a wipe but it's really easy you just gotta get there quick and here comes the sister right there Uh, fast groups so they'll just go up and um, you, you can't leave somebody behind though if you got a new person behind they'll get stuck in the mobs and, and they'll die kind of like in castle never they wake up the um, the sleeping enemies so the first boss is really easy uh, except for that blip where I had hypo for some reason uh, that killed me which was very unusual uh, I would have picked you up Jew Okay, and she's done. And here we go. Oh, Cutscene, you can't skip this, unfortunately. They make you suffer through it. Okay. So, thank you to Jew and Lord Darkfire and Smexy and Huchi Manana for joining today and helping with the video. So when we come up here, we're gonna have a mob and you're gonna go left, but don't follow the path. Go on the side and you'll skip a couple mobs. So if you go right here on the side where everybody's jumping, you'll skip all those mobs over there. It just helps save a minute or so. But if you do this and there's a new player who doesn't do it, they'll, uh, and you go in this door, you'll just leave them on their own and they'll die. So the rest of this dungeon almost the whole way through there's no mechanics. It's just slash and go slash and go Yeah, I guess we could wait for the tank maybe but this they don't even hit that hard. Well I think they're letting me I think they're they're conniving to let me die. I Think they want me to die on a video so they're doing it on purpose <laughs> and um you just kill them. It's so easy. There is going to be a cool little boss coming up. It's the Executioner. He's going to put his mark on somebody. And you have to kill him before he gets to that player with the mark. Or else he will one-shot him. It's pretty cool, actually. Here comes mobs over the fence. And this is a good team. This is a really good team. But you don't... We're all scaled. It's scaled content, so it's not like you can really make a dream team for this dungeon. And here's the executioner. Is it going to be me? Okay, it's Ellis. Huchi Manana has it right there. He gets to her with that red mark. She's dead, but it's over. And now we're going to... Um, and I know I'm skipping all the achievements. This is just how to do this uh, dungeon. There's a lot of cool hidden... Uh, achievements in here you can get one or two of them right here as well um so random mobs are gonna start popping they're really easy just kill them when they come up now this next boss <clears throat> it's almost i'd want to say a dps check but it's not really it used to be but if the dps is really small here while they're attacking there's uh, four pillars. This pillar, this pillar, uh, this pillar, and this pillar. And if he does a spinning, uh, spinning attack, there's no way to make it stop unless he hits a pillar. And when he hits a pillar, it will he will knock that pillar down. And if he does that four times, he will knock down the four pillars and the roof will fall on you all and it's a wipe. So you have to kill him before those... Uh, he does his spinning attack the fourth time. Um, but I haven't had that happen in a long time. Thank, thank you. But can't. So the big thing you want to do is let the tank get aggro. 
and the DPS all get get combat advantage because combat advantage is such a damage multiplier and uh, I don't have an optimal DPS loadout for here at all uh, I'm not worried one bit if you have the books you're probably not gonna get high DPS I'm gonna be so far on the bottom of it see BAM Lord suck you noob he's a noob <laughs> Everybody who knows him uh, knows why that's funny. He's he's a monster. <laughs> and it, this is a pretty cool boss, though. Um, actually, if you learn this dungeon, this is probably one of the more enjoyable, if not the most enjoyable, dungeon in the game. It'd be great if there was worthwhile loot, though. But there's not. Unless um, well, no, you could argue there is, but. So we're gonna let the tank get aggro. That's it. There's Jew. We got the purple right there. That hurt. And then go crazy. Bam. There we go. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get a spinning attack or two so you can see. But um, I've heard that the tank can control when the spinning attacks happen or not but I'm not 100% certain there's a large overhead attack that he does and if the tank blocks it not take it to the face but actually blocks it with their shield it will trigger the spinning storm it, maybe that's just a rumor or a myth yeah Yeah, you have plenty of time. He's almost done, and he hasn't done his spinning attack yet. And I'm staying away because he hurts me too much. Uh, that was a bad move. Oh! The heck? They, um... I don't think I'm gonna get healed this whole dungeon. Oh, there it is. So you gotta hide behind it because it's invincible. And you saw he knocked down that pillar, but it stuns him, so you can keep attacking him. So if he does that four times, it's a uh, it's a wipe. So the DPS has everybody has to do their job pretty quick. <clears throat> All right, now comes now we got a long stretch before the third boss. It's not long if you go fast though. And I always forget, is it this one? No, it's the other one. Of course I went the wrong way. Wait, I was going the right way. Damn it. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, we gotta wait till he opens the door. And this has a, that little bat's just annoying. Uh, it just knocks you back and, and then there's little things on the floor that freezes you. All this does it slows down the run and there's nothing to be afraid of. Ah, uh, thank you, Jew. I appreciate that. So can you read what he just said there? When he sticks the sword in the ground, the tank has to take the hit or it will begin the spinning attack. And here comes some wolves right here. Easy, just do some AoE. And um, now we go forward. We got a couple... Um, armor men who are going to come animated we kill them and then we'll have another one of those executioners uh, but really if anybody's um, uncomfortable with this dungeon you just oh there it is there's the executioner I don't know who's marked um, nice it's Ellis again he must like the healer today <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was healing me I was totally giving her a hard time so now you gotta get through here really quick because you see all those enemies they're coming after you so somebody has to pray and as soon as somebody prays oh! I was trying to skip them but I'm slow HRs don't have a sprint we got a little tiny tiny dash we're just, it, uh, I think don't don't you guys have like a long dash is a cleric oh. 
So Ellis just gave a great pointer. I've always gone up the middle route. Uh, Ellis has noticed that if you go down the sides, it won't draw any aggro. So we'll give you clean access to the altar. So thank you for that, Ellis. And, uh, and then, uh, you just stand here, survival. We get surrounded by mobs, get back down to the door. I have two deaths in an instructional video trying to say how easy this dungeon is. What a hypocrite, Gus. <laughs> and just go up the stairs. You notice I'm not attacking these mobs. I'm leaving them for everybody else that's going slow back there. And I don't have any speed stuff. I have uh, two gladiators. And I think we get the sword real quick. Maybe not. Um, nope. We got a set of mobs. So you can attack them right here. But I prefer to do both mobs in one place just to get them done faster. Uh, that's probably um, not smart if you're learning the dungeon. Take them, do the mobs one at a time. And there's a whole bunch of cool when you're in here if you're taking your time. There's lore and stuff in here. Okay, there we go. Mm. Oh, really? Oh my gosh, I never knew that. So there's more stunning in there to slow us down. But if you're looking down at the floor as you're running, it will prevent the stun. I never knew that. Thank you, everybody. Oh, okay. So here's the sword up here. That's a trap right there. That little black square is a trap. Another cutscene we can't skip. Ugh. The moves on the sword, if you have it, are really self-explanatory. Um, uh, R1 is to drop it, but um, the only move I usually do is the spinning one with R2, or sorry, L2, and the dash to get to the door quick. And while that's opening, I'll empower it, and I'll just start spinning as soon as we get in here. And it used to be the... Uh, you needed this sword to kill most of the mobs, but now you don't even need this sword to kill it. But somebody has to have it because if you don't have the sword, you can't activate the last boss. So somebody has to get it. I, it's actually, it used to be monstrous how, how this just killed everything. He won't let us proceed until we kill the mobs. Yeah, these everybody would be like um, standing back as the sword holder would just instant kill everybody. Whoever had the sword would be, have like a hundred million more than everybody damage. It was maybe not that much, but it was sick. And we got more stairs. Ugh. So there is a. I don't know if it's true or a rumor. But when everybody gets to the end before you activate the door, press R1, drop the sword, and let everybody pick up the sword. And if you do that, it will give like um, five buffs to the, either the sword or the sword holder. I don't know. Um, I don't do it because the amount of time it takes, I don't notice any benefit, but it might benefit the new groups. So you just press R1, drop it, and let everybody pick it up. <clears throat> Um, this can be a pain. Um, the AOE has kind of one-shot me. So, um, sometimes the best hill in the world, hill or in the world can't prevent a one-shot. Um, the overshields, usually you won't get one-shot. If you're in the right place, you won't get one-shot. I have never figured out the perfect placement to avoid some of the AOEs. Maybe I should spend the time to, but, um... Yeah. Just stand on your healer. I'll do. I'll stand behind you so you take the hit, Ellis, and then I won't take any. Oh, thank you, sucker. 
Oh, thank you, Jew. See, everybody knows this dungeon better than me. I, I don't know the candles. <laughs> Ooh, I just okay. Ooh, I I'm probably that guy who kills everybody. So you can actually get a little bit of damage right here. Watch this. Oh, I should have empowered it first. I will. I'm just get. I'm just see. Look at that. I just ensured this run was a success by taking that minuscule amount of damage off of him. So you're talking the candles on the wall right here? These ones? Or the ones on the floor? Okay. Oh, the... Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Oh, snap! Okay. Thank you. So if you get those uh, bats on you, go to these candles. It's that easy. I didn't know that. I always just try to group up with everybody. <laughs> so somebody's trapped. Somebody's going to go under right now. Somebody's going under. Oh. And then, um, and then, uh, yeah, the faster we kill it, the faster the phase. The sword holder wants to get it as soon as it comes in the middle. Uh, sometimes the person who's trapped will land right on top of it when they come out it, that's okay just have them drop it or if you're if they're comfortable doing it just let them do it uh, maybe I'll get uh, sucked in so you can see what it looks like and spinning attack go now we, some people want to get anxious and rush out there and get him uh, it's best to just wait at the side until he comes to you all uh, that way you can have combat advantage easier and even though he's in the middle and you're supposed to wait you can get some extra hits right here and okay don't give me bats yeah give me bats so I can show <laughs> and when you're under you just have to survive until they kill the um, those four guys that we just killed on the last round. You just have to survive down there until they kill everybody. So the slower the group is, the longer you're down there on your own. Uh, so you're hoping that they they uh, kill them quickly. One down, and it helps when somebody gets combat advantage like that. Yeah, there we go. That circles, ouchie. Thank you for the heals, Ellis. Oh shit. I'm gonna die. So the third phase of this is very can be very frustrating uh, because the sword holder is the o only person who wipes the group or ensures its survival and there's this part that is an automatic wipe if the sh uh, sword holder which is me right now because I'm holding it and what we have to do is press L1 and square at the same time at the right time if we do it too soon the shield will we will wear off before the mechanic and we'll die if we do it too late we'll get hit by the first phase the first wave and it will kill us so watch the uh, buttons uh, you can see my three attacks if I hold down L1 oh I don't have the sword but the um, but the square button puts a shield over everybody and so how it normally works but sometimes it's buggy he'll go now race me to the heavens and then you go one one thousand two one thousand Three one thousand, pop it, and then after that, it, you gotta attack them a little bit, but it's done. Um, 
um, everybody's holding their breath during that phase because they don't they don't trust the person holding the sword. Um, but once you get it, they'll always make you be the sword 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 holder. Uh, okay, I'm going in the candles. Bam! Did I do it on time, Ellis? No. Thank you. Okay, now. <clears throat> and then we race to the side with the group. He's taking a sweet time. Come on. There you go. You can't hold that spinning attack around too long because if you do, it will uh, dizzy. Okay, here it comes. And he's going to say, now race you to the heavens. And one 1,000. You see my attacks down there? One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. Woo. Yeah, it's a little late. But that's okay. We got it. And you got to keep holding down the L1 or else it will stop pulling up the shield. Ta-da. This dungeon's so easy. I just had those freak deaths. Uh, uh, one with the book with the hypo and the other one. Was it because I was running ahead of the group maybe? Hmm. Oh yeah, it's because I try to get to the altar and I'm the slow one. I guess I should wait for him, but I'm in a hurry to just get open the chest. And at the end of this dungeon, there's um, two chests, but he'll randomly drop a sun sunset shard. And uh, you want to get those, because I think once you have about 40, you can restore the sunset weapons. And they are, uh, they're pretty unique. They're really rare. Very few people have gone through the trouble of getting them. Okay, so... Um, so... Uh, Sokka and Smexy and Jew and um, Ellis, thank you. And I don't want that. Oh, that was somebody's first time. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us. And you got to drop the, the sword because if not, um, you can't open the chest. If you got any questions, um, feel free to type them below and me or somebody else will be able to answer them. But obviously there's a lot of learning in this dungeon. Some of it's necessary. Some of it's just helpful. But the, um, the need-to-know mechanics, they're pretty simple. All right. Well, stay classy, in the everyone. Oh, yeah. Somebody always gets upset if I don't um, open these. So I'll do that on video. Oh. Mm, I need it. I need the insignia powder. Okay. Stay classy, in the everyone. See you soon.